Today I'm going to show you how to configure a Soundtrack Tsunami 1 decoder for appropriate use with the Proto Throttle. I have an Athern Genesis SD70 Illinois Central Road number 1021. This particular locomotive was manufactured by Athern uh, somewhere in the ballpark of about 2014 2015, I think, is when I picked this up. It has the original Soundtracks decoder in it. Um, this is a different setup configuration compared to the Tsunami 2 decoders for the Proto Throttle. Um, this is an older decoder, so it doesn't have some of the index CVs to, you know, uh, set up the headlights and ditch lights like we would a Tsunami 2. So I'm going to do a real quick video using JMRI on how to appropriately set up the Tsunami 1 decoder for the Proto Throttle. I have track power applied. I have the locomotive on mute because it's quite loud out of the box. This decoder right now is actually set to the factory default. So uh, on my Digitrax hand throttle here, you can see I have locomotive address set up to 03. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change that when I get on to JMRI. Um, a couple things I want to show you. F0 is the headlight. F5 are the ditch lights. When I go ahead and put this in reverse, the locomotive in reverse, they're directional. So the headlights go away. We're going to go ahead and fix that within JMRI so we can have it take advantage of the light knobs on the proto throttle. Even though this is an Athern Genesis locomotive, it was produced, like I said, about four to five years ago. Um, there are no manufacturer installed ditch lights on the rear of this locomotive, so that's going to change a little bit how we program it with JMRI. Some of the new, newer Athern Genesis uh, have working front and rear ditch lights. Uh, if it's specific for the prototype, this particular one does not have working rear ditch lights, so we're only going to focus on the front when we get to uh, the programming. Okay, on my SD70 back on the programming track, I've got JMRI up and running here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my basic tab because I want to change the DCC address. It's currently at the default address of 3, so let's go ahead and change that to 1021. That's the roster number. So we'll go ahead and write this change on the sheet. I'm going to come over here and click on the sound levels. Um, the Atherin locomotives come out of the box extremely loud. It's too loud for the room that I'm in, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust some of these um, sound levels down to just more manageable levels. So there you can see that uh, I just adjusted the master volume and the air horn because they're so loud. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come over here and click on the CV tab. On the screen I have page number um, 27 out of the Tsunami Technical User's Guide for the um, Tsunami 1 decoders. And what this is, this is the function output map page. We're going to have to do this differently than what we did with our Tsunami 2 decoders because these are basically the options that we have for programming the outputs for the specific things. So you can see the first column we have F0 forward, F0 reverse. Currently right now that is actually set up for the headlight and the backup light. There's no way to disable the directionality on the Tsunami decoder, so what I'm going to need to do is, if you see here, F0 is CV controlled, uh, controlled by CV33, F0 rear is CV34. I'm actually going to change those both for, for the headlights. So I'm going to leave CV33 alone, make CV34, I'm going to change that to a value of 1 instead of 2. The nice thing about this chart is the bolded uh, numbers are the current default CV values for, for that particular function. So then I'm, what I'm going to do is I only have two other choices to be able to program the backup light. I can either do F1 or F2. Well currently right now F1 is the bell, F2 is the horn. So I'm going to have to sacrifice one of these out of one of those two slots for the backup light. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to program F1 to be the backup light and then I'm going to reprogram F3 to be the bell where currently F3 right now is the short horn. So as we go through here this should hopefully make a little bit more sense to you. So as I said we're going to go ahead and scroll down here to CV number 33. 
so that is the F0 in the forward direction. I'm going to leave that as a value of 1. If I change CV to a value of 1, I'm sorry, CV34 to a value of 1, go ahead and write that. Now this becomes really essentially we're tricking the decoder into thinking that the headlight is going to be on whether the locomotive is in forward or backwards mode. So the next step is CV35 corresponds to um, function number one. I'm going to go ahead and change this to make this the backup light. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a value of two. I'll go ahead and write this on the decoder. So now I have to reprogram where the bell goes. Function 36 corresponds to F4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprogram function 35, which is, oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to reprogram function 37, which is currently uh, corresponds to function three. And as the short horn, I'm going to make that the bell. So let's go ahead and change 37 to a value of one, which will get us the bell. Go ahead and write that. So the ditch lights on this locomotive were actually already currently set at function F5. We can leave it for that particular function. However, that is still a directional function. So now I'm actually going to have to change the directionality or basically essentially disable the directionality of F, uh, F5 for the um, for the for the uh, directionality to make sure that they're on at a constant uh, rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come ahead, go ahead, and I'm going to scroll down here. Function 57 is the directional control enable bits for both uh, FX5 and FX6. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a value of 63, and this is going to disable the functionality on. The ditch light. So when I put the locomotive in reverse, the front ditch lights will stay on. The last few changes I'm going to make uh, deal with the acceleration and deceleration of the locomotive. F3 controls the acceleration. So I'm going to change this to a value of 200. This can be whatever your preference is. Um, it just gives a little bit of a delay when you apply, apply throttle. And then for the deceleration, I'm going to change this actually to a value of about 180. The braking functions on the Tsunami 1 decoders are just a little bit different than on the Tsunami 2, so I don't have quite as much momentum with this decoder because of how the braking works. So now let's go ahead and uh, adjust the brakes here and we'll be all done. So I'm going to come down. Function 196 is actually the brake squeal. Now. On the Tsunami 2, the guys from Iowa Scale Engineering basically say you need to disable the brake squeal. I don't know if that holds true for the Tsunami 1, but I'm just going to go ahead and disable the brake squeal. That is um, CV196, so I'm just going to change that to 0. And now let's scroll back up. The braking function on this particular locomotive or this particular decoder is CV number 61. And again, this is a little bit different. Um, basically, Atherin says that you can program this from either negative 127 to positive 127. Um, you can fiddle with CV61 here, but actually, if I come over here to the um, if I come over to the Advanced tab, it actually gives you an opportunity to change the braking rate. So here's the uh, F11 braking rate. So I'm actually going to make this 125. And how to make it positive or negative, this F11 brake sign, right now it's actually going to add this value to CV number 4. So if I change this to subtract, it will actually now subtract it and you'll, you'll have a quicker response with your braking. So let's go ahead and write these changes on the sheets. And that's it. Those are the CVs that you have to change. So now let's go ahead real quick and get the proto throttle set up and we are good to go. Okay, real quick, I'm just going to demonstrate on my Digitrax throttle here. All of the changes verify that they work before I go to the proto throttle. So first thing, we change this to locomotive 1021.
verify that with a mute. We'll get the volume off here uh, just for a second. So let's just go ahead. So F0 should be the headlights. Those come on. Let's go ahead and change the directionality of this. So you can see when I change the directionality, the lights stay on, which is fantastic. Uh, F5, ditch lights, they come on. Again, let's check the directionality. They stay on whether the locomotive is in forward or reverse. I'm gonna unmute it here for just a second. So F1, if you remember, was the backup light. We'll verify that in a second. F2 should still be the horn. F3, we reprogrammed to be the bell. Mute that again real quick. And then let's just verify. So F1 should be the backup light. That comes on. Let's change the directionality. Again, so it stays on whether or not the locomotive's in forward or reverse. So all of the changes we made on the decoder with JMRI are, are working. So now let's go ahead and get the proto throttle set up. Okay, I have my proto throttle set up here. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we need to um, set the locomotive. So this one is 10, 21. So that's saved. Let's go into the conf uh, configuration function menu. So we made a few changes here. So the horn now becomes F3. The bell is, whoops, get out of this here. Sorry, I got ahead of myself here. Go back and consider. The horn is still F2. The bell now has become F3. The brake is going to be F11. Auxiliary, um, so that's this button up here. Right now, this locomotive doesn't have dynamic brakes or anything like that, so I'm actually just gonna leave this as F10 for right now. You can program it however you want to. Engine on, F26, engine stop, F27. Here we're gonna have to make some changes. So the front headlight is gonna be F0. The front ditch is gonna be F5. Front dim, we'll leave that as F0. Front dim two is F7. Rear headlight, again, we've made that function F1, so that's set up. There's no rear ditch lights on this. Rear dim F1, F7. And again, these are the up button and the down button over here. They're currently programmed. I think F13 should be the coupler clash. F8 is gonna be mute. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to, we're, we're set. We're gonna go ahead and power the track up here and do a quick test of the decoder functions. Okay, I have the locomotive set up here, so let's just go ahead and test some of these uh, functions out. First of all, I'm gonna mute it. So that's the bottom button there. Um, let's go ahead and check the front. Should be the dim. Bright. And then ditch. See, it's pretty weak, but the, the ditch lights are there on this particular with uh, model with the incandescent, incandescent bulbs. Uh, they don't have a lot of brightness to them, so that works. Um, just gonna put this in forward here. Lights stay on. Go ahead and change that to a reverse direction. Lights stay on. Um, we'll check out the rear light here in just a minute. When I get the camera set up to the rear of the locomotive, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute this here for a second. Put it in forward direction. Give it a little bit of throttle. Apply the brake. Release the brake, put it in reverse. And then just real quick to verify the rear's work. Bright, or I'm sorry, dim, bright. There's no rear ditch lights on this. Let's 
go ahead and mute that for a second. Go ahead and disable the front headlights. So we have successfully programmed this Athern Genesis uh, SD70. It has a Tsunami 1 decoder in it. It works fantastic with the protothrottle. Um, you know, again, I, I appreciate everybody watching these videos. Um, this has certainly been a learning experience for me in terms of being able to program these locomotives. Uh, I've learned more about programming since I've gotten the proto throttle than I've really done in probably the five years that I've had a DCC layout set up. So if you have any questions, be sure to give me a comment. Otherwise, uh, good luck and happy railroading and, and go out and buy a proto throttle. These things are amazing.